Everywhere, not at least within the cultural sphere, there seems to be a call from a tiny yet very vocal minority that every male character or good role model must have a female replacement. One only needs to look at the discussion surrounding who will play the next James Bond. And it's not just James Bond. In recent years, we have seen Doctor Who, Ghostbusters, Luke Skywalker, The Equaliser. What on earth was that weird, slightly orgasmic noise he just made? The Equaliser, all replaced by women. And men are left with the craze and Tommy Shelby. Is there any wonder we are seeing so many young men committing crime? There is so much to unpack here. So for a start off, he's talking about the causes of crime and suggests it's something to do with violent movies. Yet he's also talking about the Equalizer and Star Wars. Both movies have excessive amounts of violence in them. The other problem here is the causes of crime. Actually, most of the time it's down to poverty. The more poverty you have, the higher the crime rate. It's not that difficult to realize those are the causes. And of course, the Tories seem to love causing poverty. But the other thing is, they're talking about role models. And I've deliberately created this picture because I'm going to dissect how those five are awful, awful role models. Hey everyone, welcome back to Political X. For more knowledge and updates on UK, European and US politics, make sure you subscribe to this channel. So let's talk about the violent movies that he talked about causing crime. There's obviously very little evidence and this has been kicking around since the 1990s as a debate. As you can see, I've got Mortal Kombat in the background, which was suggested at the time to be a cause of crime and increase of violence, yet very little evidence has been put together to show one way or another if computer games or television causes crime. However, one thing that does cause crime is poverty, which is something that this government tends to ignore. In fact, there's plenty of evidence to show that they think poverty is a good thing when having discussions with UN representatives about food banks according to the UN member who came and met with members of the UK Parliament, it's found that they didn't have a problem with food banks and they thought they were good. However, they're not. It means that people are so desperate they're having to go to charity to get food. That's not a sign of economic wealth or prosperity, it's a sign of poverty, and poverty causes crime. There's substantial evidence to show that that's the case, and quite frankly, it's just a level of common sense to realise poverty causes crime. You could look back as far as the 1980s into the United States and see the crime epidemic that they were having in the 80s and early 90s. Part of the reason for getting rid of that was an economic boom with the internet. There was also some suggestion that Roe v Wade played a part in reducing crime. We can also see that increasing police numbers always has an effect, but it's relatively minimal. It's one of the key concepts within the Tory party. It's one of the key concepts with these guys in front of you, and yet, they don't understand that, and they think that the only solution is to put more people out on the street and make crime punishment even harsher, to the point of executing members of the public. Now, the MP did write a letter to go into more detail about what he meant by those comments about women. I was pleased to speak at the International Men's Day debate today, especially as it gave me a chance to raise several points that are often a little overlooked within political discourse. These points namely touch upon poor academic attainment of boys in schools and a lack of positive role models for many struggling males in society. It is just so unbelievable to think that an MP would suggest there aren't enough male role models. Has he not been to the cinema in the last 10 to 12 years? There are a ton of fantasy role models available. Now if you go, oh, they're fantasy, he's just listed off a load of movies that aren't based on fact. Equalizer, James Bond is two, Doctor Who. So it's it's like, what are you talking about? You're deliberately creating a scenario that doesn't exist. We also have some very interesting statistics to back this up, which I'll talk about later. He then goes on to say, as alluded to earlier in my speech, teachers, parents, and carers need to teach young men and boys that males can make a positive difference. I mean, yeah, true. But then you could also say, why don't you just say that about humans in general? Promoting this can be done through various means, including through films and programs. As I've just pointed out, 
there are a ton, a ton of positive role models for boys to follow, if they so choose to, following Marvel and DC. He then goes on to say, Yet something often not discussed is that the only characters many boys with no good role models in their lives see on television and online are increasingly criminal. For whatever reason, there appears to be a certain squeamishness when pointing out that when a boy's role models are all violent criminals, this negatively influences how they view masculinity and what it means to be a man. I honestly wonder what the Conservative Party does in real life. Do they follow cinema? Have they seen any of this stuff? Or do they just live in a little bubble of Westminster? So all those comments link into a lack of male role models. Well, how about this for a set of statistics that I found recently? 2011 statistics, women on screen. Females accounted for 33% of all characters. Females compromised only 11% of the protagonist. Male characters are much more likely than female characters portrayed as leaders. Overall male characters account for 86% and female characters 74% of leaders. Males 40 and over account for 50% of all male characters. Females 40 and over, 25% of all female characters. So what's actually happening is that the movie industry is going and addressing these statistics and saying, right, we need to make bigger efforts to put female and minorities into lead roles, which is exactly what he's complaining about. So what he's done is gone off and come up with some anecdotal evidence without doing any research and then said that this is happening across the board. I mean, even if you do it anecdotally, you just have to go and look at a cinema board listing and you'll see it's full of Marvel and DC movies, all with male leads. So I've then found some statistical data from UCLA. Top 200 films of 2018 to 2019. Women represented 44% of film leads and 40% of total actors, meaning that that number has increased over an eight year period because Hollywood has gone, we need to increase diversity within the film industry, within the acting industry. Nick Fletcher clearly has some weird twisted agenda going on in his head. He doesn't understand what's actually taking place. He doesn't get out of the house. And he obviously doesn't look at statistics when he's making these points. He just decides that he doesn't like James Bond being a female. He doesn't like Doctor Who being a female. He's a misogynist from what I can tell. And, you know, I'm happy to have him rebuke this and come back to me and say, I don't think that's the case. But I don't know where he's getting his evidence from. It doesn't make any sense anecdotally or statistically. People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And Nick has just done that. Look at this group of role models. He says he wants some role models. Look at this group. They're all horrible. People have called them scum. MPs have called them scum. They're repulsive, repugnant, outrageously awful. And if you don't believe me, so let's start with Matt Hancock, who is going to lie to you, to your face, on the screen right now about what you should and should not be doing. One rule for the public, another rule for them. Is it acceptable to sit down in the park and sunbathe if you are maintaining social distancing? We're absolutely clear that you should not leave your home unless it's for one of four reasons. For medical reasons, to buy food, uh, to go to work if you can't work at home, or for exercise. And of course I understand how difficult this is. I wonder if going through his head right now, it's really difficult for everyone else, but I'm getting laid at work, so it's fine. But the problem is, that when you go out, it's not only that you might directly interact with somebody closer than two metres. And he's definitely getting a lot closer than two metres. It's also that whenever you, uh, that you can spread the virus uh, through touching something which somebody else then touches, or you could pick it up that way. When you start listening to what he's saying and then thinking about the fact that he's having sex with someone, <laughs> it's like really horrible. So we're, we're crystal clear in the guidance of what people should and shouldn't do. That guidance is backed up in law. It is not a request. It is a requirement in law and people need to follow it. People do, I don't. I'm Matt Hancock 
and I can do whatever the hell I want. Bear in mind, Nick Fletcher's just been moaning about a lack of male role models, and we've got this on our doorstep. You asked about hugging people. Uh, when people have had both jabs, then it is, uh, it, it, that, is that is pretty safe. Right. Okay. But you shouldn't still spend a lot of time in close okay. proximity. You should make sure ventilation's good. We all know what we can do and take personal responsibility. But of course, as he's saying all of that, he's having an affair with his aide, who he hired to come and work and protect everyone from COVID while spreading it between two houses. It's pretty disgusting and not role model material on several levels. In fact, this is going to be even worse because this is going to erode trust in our confidence in government. And again, we're looking for role models here. And that leads perfectly onto Boris. Someone you can't trust and the public doesn't trust. Let's have a look at what a professor of psychology had to say about the Dominic Cummings affair. The thing about this Cummings affair, which made it truly toxic, was not what Dominic Cummings did himself. It was when the Prime Minister defended him, and therefore an individual indiscretion turned into a systemic issue, a sense of there's one rule for us and another rule for them. And so for me, the Hancock affair changed when, again, the Prime Minister rode in and defended him, again giving rise to that sense of, uh, if you are uh, one of the government, an advisor, a minister, you're treated in one way, but the rest of us are treated differently. And once you have a sense of them and us, it critically undermines trust. You have a sense of the government as not looking after us, not on our side, but as other, um, as imposing upon us. And in the week or two after the Cummings affair, trust in government plummeted so much that the pollsters were shaking their heads and wondering if they got it wrong. It plummeted by about 20% in a week. It went down from nearly 80% to around 30%. Now, you might argue there is so little trust now, there's little more to squander. But nonetheless, in the midst of a huge national crisis, we want a government uh, we trust and we want a government that we're going to listen to. And that trust is something that you always want to have in a role model. You've got to trust what they say. You want them to have strong values. You're looking for people more akin to the Black Panther or Captain America. People who have core values that we can all relate to. Honesty, intelligence, faithfulness, a can-do, die-hard attitude, willing to fight for the end and for humanity. And quite frankly, I don't feel as if we get that with this government. We get something more akin to an apocalypse. And let's just have a look at some of those core values coming out in an Eddie Ma interview with Boris Johnson. Right. Well, I, haven't, the, I haven't seen it, so you... No, you but, but, but this happened in your life, so you, you know about this. The Times theory. let you go after you made up a quote. Why did you make up a quote? Well, uh, this, this, again, you know, these are... These are, these are Big terms for what happened. Why well, I can tell you the whole thing. I mean, it was, it, 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 I think our, you know, I think, do you, are you sure our viewers wouldn't want to hear more about well, housing? Right. If you don't, don't want to talk about, if you don't want to talk about it was, a, it was, a, it was a long, a long and lamentable story. Okay, but you made uh, it which, up. Well, what happened was that um, I ascribed events uh, that were supposed to have taken place before. Uh, the death of Piers Gaveston to events that actually took yes. place after the death. You made of something Gaveston. up. Let me ask you well, about another little. I mean, uh, I mildly sandpapered right. something. Something. Let me ask you about a yes, barefaced lie. It was very lie, embarrassing. Though. I'm very sorry about Let it. Let me ask you about a barefaced lie. When right. you were in Michael Howard's team, you denied to him you were having an affair. Uh, it turned out you were, and he sacked you for that. Why did you lie to your party? Well, I mean, again, I mean, with great respect. On, on that, um, I never had any conversation with Michael Howard about that matter, and uh, you know, I don't. You did lie. Propose to well, you know, I don't propose to go into all that again. I, I, think, I, I don't I, blame I you. Be, no, well, why should I? I mean, I've, I've, been, I've been through, uh, you know, uh, that question a lot with the... the they okay. watch the all documentary. Right. Okay. Uh, the why program, are we talking about something else? The programme also includes... Well, this is about your integrity. Okay. The programme includes your reaction as you listen to a phone call in which your friend, Darius Guppy, asks you to supply the address of a journalist yes. so that he can have him physically assaulted, the words beaten up and broken ribs... Are said to yes. you. And you, having heard that, you tell your friend, Darius Guppy, you will supply the address. Let's listen to that phone call. Uh, how badly are you going to hurt this guy? Not badly at all. I, I really, I want to know. Cause it, I, okay, let me explain this. I, if, if this guy is serious, I'm be curious. I guarantee you he will not be serious. How badly hurt He will not have a broken limb or broken arm. He will not, uh, he will not be 
couldn't see in terms of care or anything like that. He will, he'll probably get a couple of black eyes and a, and a, and a, and a crack rib. Nothing which you didn't suffer in rugby, okay? But you get scared, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get scared, I wanted to have no idea who's behind it. Okay, okay if I get if I get to You will not, Boris, I swear to you, if you knew... Okay, 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 I'm not going to say I'm not going to say I just got this bloody number for you. Uh, don't worry. Okay, Jerry, I thought I'll do it, I'll do it. Don't worry. Boris, I really mean it, I love you. What does that say about you, Boris Johnson? Well, Aren't I'm... you, in fact, making up quotes, lying to your party leader, Wanting to be part well, of uh, yeah. someone being physically assaulted. You're a nasty piece of work, aren't you? And I honestly want to know what this guy thinks of that video that I've just shown you, showing a guy who's a thug. And you can hear these things of like, oh, it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Oh, it was in my distant past. You're an adult. I mean, this is a guy who also takes coke. What are you going to do about that? You're, you've got someone saying they're looking for role models and they're throwing disparaging remarks about TV. Whilst the leader of their party lies, cheats, has affairs, and... And of course, on top of that, we also have a multitude of racial incidents involving the Prime Minister, from where he's writing really racist comments, to insulting presidents of the United States, questioning their ethnicity and their background. Some say it was a snub to Britain. Some say it was a symbol of the part Kenyan president's ancestral dislike of the British Empire. Well, we saw that during his time as foreign secretary. In 2017, he was in Myanmar, where for some reason, he kept muttering Rudyard Kipling's colonialist poem, Mandalay, to himself. Do you think Bowie stays safe? Yeah, we, we got one down. Come you back, Red, you English soldier. Look at that over there. Huh. Remember that too. <laughs> The ambassador is quick to spot that reminding their hosts of British rule might not be wise. So probably not. What, the rage man lay? Yeah, not appropriate. Is it good stuff? Or is that actually bad stuff? Because I would argue, as a foreign secretary, it's best not to remind people of when your country subjugated theirs for more than a century. It honestly would have been more diplomatic at that point for him to recite the lyrics to My Neck, My Back, parentheses, <laughs> Lick It by Kaya. My neck, my back, lick my pussy, and my crack. Good stuff, good stuff. Immigrants <laughs> as people that want to leech off the state. And over the years, he's made references to pickaninnies. He said the people of Congo had watermelon smiles. He's called gay men tank-topped bum boys. And just last year, there was this. They look like letterboxes, Boris Johnson wrote on Monday. He even compared women who wear them to bank robbers. That is an appalling comment that leaves a truly disgusting taste in your mouth. ..who agreed with me that uh, there could be... Would you ever use those words again? ..oppressive... Uh, yes, of course I would. You know, people say, oh, politicians should be careful what they say and they should watch their words and all this sort of mumbo-jumbo. I don't agree. I don't agree. I really don't. Even if it's I think, offensive. I think one of the, one of the reasons... But even if it's offensive, Mr well, Johnson. I, I don't want to cause offence if I can possibly avoid well, it. Well, then don't but, refer to them as well, bank robbers. You know, I think... I think you just said you would again. I think that one of the uh, in, duties of a politician is to speak his mind or her mind in, in so far as, uh, as possible. Why would you not learn from mistakes? Shouldn't politicians also learn from mistakes? Look, I, you know, if, if, if people are offended, if people feel insulted, then, then yes, I would. I want to see progress. All right. Would you take the knee? Prime Minister. Uh, look, I, what I want to do is no, 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 do this is substantial... A yes no, uh, well, let me give you my answer. I, 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 I don't believe in, in gestures. I... <laughs> I believe in substance. I believe in doing things that make a practical difference. A practical difference. He's scuppered the economy, destroyed tourism, farming, fishing, the economy is probably having its worst recession in history. What practical difference? And you're telling me this is a role model. This is someone that we should be looking up to. This is someone you should be telling your kids about and saying, hey kids, look at this guy, he's great. This is who you should be like. Not a chance. No one's gonna be saying that to their kids. Let's have a look at Pretty Patel though. That's an interesting character because she claims she's been bullied and yet she now goes around the office bullying all of her staff 
and it's coming back to haunt the Prime Minister because it's just come out this November. It looks like there's going to be legal actions taken against number 10 for not dealing with Pretty Patel's bullying. It has effectively said that this government doesn't understand um, racial inequality. Well, on that basis, Madam Deputy Speaker, it must have been a very different Home Secretary who, as a child, was frequently called a packy in the playground. A very different Home Secretary who was racially abused in the streets or even advised to drop her surname and use her husband's in order to advance her career. That's sad that anyone has to go through that and no one should, but it's also really interesting because you'd think that someone experiencing that would also create a level of empathy in them and make sure that they don't do it to others. And if that also should include bullying. Yet clearly Pretty Patel hasn't learned from those experiences. And according to this, she is now going to be sued by the Civil Servants Union along with 10 Downing Street. And bearing in mind, Alex Allen, Johnson's independent advisor on the Mysterial Code, resigned last year if the Prime Minister chose not to act on a critical report about Patel. After a Cabinet Office investigation citing instances in which she had shouted and sworn at staff, Allen found Patel had displayed behaviour that can be described as bullying, and that she had not consistently met the high standards expected of her. Yet she's happy in Parliament to go and cite how she was bullied at school and had racist abuse. She's learned nothing from it. In fact, actually, I would go so far as to say she's learned to be nasty, a nasty piece of work. And again, we go back to role models. Would you be telling children that Pretty Patel is a role model? And of course, Boris also lets her off. So that's another strike against Boris. He doesn't enforce the law. Is that something you want your kids to follow? Let's take a look at Michael Gove. In a case brought to the High Court of Justice by the Good Law Project, Michael Gove was found to have acted unlawfully when the government awarded a contract without tender to a polling company owned by long-term associates of his and Dominic Cummings, then Boris Johnson's chief advisor. Half a million in COVID contracts given out, and it isn't just there. We could go back to Matt Hancock also doing the same giving out contracts to pub landlords. We're also aware that people who could produce PPE couldn't get in contact with the government. We are also aware that people volunteering their services with expert knowledge were ignored. High levels of corruption, something akin to that of Hydra. And last but not least, let's have a listen to Rhys Mogg, suggesting that people don't have common sense, but also reinforcing the fact that Tories don't seem to believe in following instructions from other people and that actually they're a law unto themselves and they should make their own decisions as to what is safe and is not safe. Again, one rule for them and another for the public. This is Grenfell Tower. Have a listen. I mean, not only is there the issue of the cladding that should have been removed from the building and cladding is essentially plastic. They wrap it in plastic, which is highly flammable. But then Jacob Rees-Mogg comes out and tries to suggest that the people who were inside should have completely ignored the fire service advice and used their common sense to leave. Have a listen. Because of the cladding leading to the fire racing up the building and then was compounded by the stay put policy. And uh, it seems to me that that is the tragedy of it, that the more one's read over the weekend about the report and about the chances of people surviving, if you just ignore what you're told and leave, you are so much safer. And uh, I, I think if either of us were in a fire, whatever the fire brigade said, we would leave the burning building. It just seems the common sense thing to do. And it is such a tragedy that that didn't happen. But. I there is clearly issue here. There is clearly a group of people that you would not be telling your children to look up to. Because frankly, this group of people are awful on so many moral levels. It's difficult to say what went through Nick Fletcher's mind when he read out that statement. Is he a misogynist? Does he actually look at statistics? Does he look at anecdotal evidence? Does he even look within his own party to see the level of moral corruption that exists within its leadership. I don't think he does to any. And it makes me go, why is he an MP? 
he's not even able to analyse his own leadership. Anyway, on a brighter note, thank you so much to all of my patrons. It really makes such a difference to the channel being able to have a stable income, allowing me to produce more videos regularly. If you'd also like to become a patron, there is a link in the description. I hope you enjoyed my political observations this week. If you'd like to support me, please share the video with others and post about it on social media. If you're keen for more, subscribe, comment, like, and hit that notification button. Thanks for listening, and see you next time on Political X.